Oh, please, please. Oh, somehow, I don't feel like it, nurse. Uh, maybe you'll drink a little vodka. Ah. No. See, I don't drink vodka every day. Besides, it's hot enough already today. Nurse, how long have we known each other? How long? <laughs> God help me to remember. You first came here to these parts when Vera Petrovna, little Sonia's mother, was still alive. In her time, you were here for two winters. That comes to almost 11 years in all, maybe even more. Have I changed much since then? Oh, much. Then you were young and handsome. And now you have age. And now your good looks are not what they were. And now, may we say, you drink a little vodka? Yes, in ten years I have become a different man. And what's the reason, nurse? I'm overworked. No. Morning till night, always on your feet. You never know what rest is. Might you just lie down under a blanket, afraid you might be dragged off to see someone sick. And all the time we've known each other, I haven't had one free day. How could anybody not grow old? Uh, and this life itself, boring, senseless. Drab, it shackles you, this life. Around you, only odd people. Without exception, odd people. Having lived with them two or three years, little by little, you yourself get to be odd. It's inevitable. Hey, look how I've let my hair grow long. I'm odd, nurse. I haven't grown stupid. My brains, thank God, are still in the right place. Somehow, all my feelings have gone dead. Nothing I want, nothing I need. Nobody I love. Well, maybe it's only you I love. In my childhood, I had a nurse like you. Maybe you'd care to have something to eat. No. During the third week of Lent, I went to Malitskoy at an epidemic. Typhus. The huts were stacked full of people. Filthy, stinking, smoky. Calves running around the floor among the sick. And pigs, too. I worked hard all day, never sat down, didn't have a bite to eat. And when I came home, they wouldn't let me rest. They brought in a railroad switchman. I put him on the table to perform an operation. He ups and dies on me under the chloroform. And just when I didn't need any feelings, my feelings woke up. My conscience was stricken. As though I'd killed him deliberately. I sat down and I shut my eyes like this. And I thought, well, those who live 100, 200 years after us, those we blaze the trail for now, will they remember us with a kind word? They won't, nurse. People won't remember, but God will remember. Well, thank you very much. That was well said. Yes. Oh! Yes! Yes! You had enough sleep. <laughs> Yes, very much so. Since the professor and his spouse came to live here, life is off the track. I sleep at odd hours, eat a lot of highly spiced dishes, drink wine. Oh, that is not good for your health, huh? We never used to have a free minute. Sonia and I worked, I can tell you that. Now Sonia works alone. Uh, uh, drink. There's no <laughs> good in it. Oh, there's no order to anything around here. The professor gets up at 12 o'clock, but the samovar's been boiling since the early morning, waiting for him. Without them here, we always had dinner shortly afternoon, like people do everywhere. With them here, it's nearly 7 o'clock. And the professor reads and writes all night. And then suddenly, after 1 o'clock at night, comes a ring. And what is it, sir? Tea. Wake up, people, for him. Start the samovar. Oh, what order? How much longer will they stay here? A <laughs> hundred years. The professor decided to make his home here. There, now, see, the samovar's already been on the table two hours, and they've gone walking. Here they are. Here they are. Don't get upset. Wonderful view. Remarkable, Your Excellency. We're going to our wood tomorrow, Papa. Would you like to? Oh, yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, tea? No, 
send the tea into my study. Would you be so kind, my friend? There is something more that I must do today. And you will surely like our woods, Papa. Yes. Stifling hot, but our great scientist wears an overcoat, rubbers, an umbrella, and gloves. Well, that means he's preserving his health. Whether I ride in the fields. How beautiful. I've never seen a lovely woman. Oh, look at this table. I experience inexplicable delight. The weather is charming. Little birds sing. We all live in this world in harmony. What eyes. I am deeply grateful to you. An exquisite woman. Ivan Petrovich, talk about something. <laughs> what did I talk about? Well, is there any news since I was here last? No. Everything is an old story. I am the same as I always was. Grown worse, most likely, since I'm getting lazy. I, I do nothing. Only make a fuss. Like any other old fool. And the professor? Herr Professor has unfortunately not yet been devoured by moths. As usual, he sits in his study from morning till night and writes. He would make a superb subject for a book. Just think, a retired professor, stale as an old crust. A dried old learned macro. This macro lives here, on the estate of his first wife. He hates it, but he cannot afford to live in town. Forever he complains of his misfortunes. Though as a matter of fact, he's unusually lucky. Just think what luck. No, Don Juan never knew such triumphs. His first wife, my sister, a beautiful, gentle creature, pure as his blue sky, noble, generous, who had more admirers than he had students, loved him as only angels might love somebody as pure and lovely as they are. His mother-in-law, my mother, still adores him, and he still inspires her with holy fear. And his second wife, you just saw her, a beauty, brilliant. Married him when he was already old, gave him her youth, beauty, freedom. What for? Why? Is she faithful to the professor? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. And why, unfortunately? Faithfulness like that is forced from beginning to end. It has a fine sound, but no logic. To deceive an old husband you cannot bear is immoral. But to try to silence within yourself your poor youth and your live feelings, that is quite moral. Vanya! Vanya, I don't like it when you talk like that. Well, really, now, anybody who could be unfaithful to wife or to husband is, it so means to me, an unfaithful person who could be unfaithful even to his own country. Oh, shut off your tap, waffle. Well, allow me, Vanya. My wife ran off with her lover the day after our wedding because of my unattractive appearance. But after that, I've not shirked my duty. I still love her. I'm faithful to her. Well, I help her with what I can. I gave up my property to educate the little children she begot with her lover. Happiness I'm robbed of, but I still have pride. And she, what has she left? Her youth is gone. Her beauty with the laws of nature has faded. Her lover has passed away. What has she left? Nurse, nurse, the peasants have come. Go talk to them, and I'll pour the tea. I came to see your husband. You wrote he was very ill. Rheumatism, something else. Seems to me he's quite well. well yesterday evening he was depressed. He complained of pains in his legs, but today he is quite fit. Huh? Me breaking my neck galloping 30 years. Well, that's quite all right. It's not the first time. Just for that, I'll stay with you till tomorrow, and at least we'll get the sleep I need. 
quantum sockets. Wonderful. You so seldom spend the night with us. Very likely you haven't had any dinner. No, I have not. So then, you will dine with us as well. We now dine after six o'clock. The tea is cold. In the samovar, the temperature has already lowered considerably. Very well, Ivan Ivanovich. We should drink it cold then. Excuse me. Not Ivan Ivanovich. Ilya Ilyich. Ilya Ilyich to Yegen. Or as some people call me because of my pockmarked face, Waffles. Once upon a time, I christened Sonia here. His Excellency, your spouse knows me very well. I live with you here on the estate. If you deign to notice, I have dinner with you every day. Ilya Ilyich is our helper, our right hand. Let me pour you some more, Godfather. Oh! What is it, Grandmother? I forgot to tell Alexander. I forgot something. I received a letter this morning from Kakov, from Pavel Alexeyevich. He sent me his new pamphlet. Oh. Is it interesting? Interesting, but strange somehow. Disapproves of what seven years ago he himself defended. It's terrible. There's nothing terrible about that. Forgive me, Jean, but during the past year you have changed so. I absolutely do not recognize you. You used to be a man of strong conviction, a bright personality. Oh, yes. I used to be a bright personality that didn't give light to anybody. Bright personality. You couldn't say anything more venomous. I am 47 years old. Up to last year, I deliberately tried, just as you do, to blind my eyes with this pedantry of yours, and not to see a real life. And I thought I was doing the right thing. But now, if you only knew, it looks as if you were challenging your former convictions. You seem to forget that a conviction in itself is nothing. It's a dead letter. You should have worked. Work? Not everybody can be a perpetual mobile writing, like your Herr Professor. What do you mean by that? Yes, Mother Uncle Vanya, I beg you. I'm silent. Silent and apologizing. Fine weather today. Not hot? Fine day to hang yourself. Please, Dr. Ostroff, we came for you. From where? From the factory. I thank you humbly. That means I'll have to go. What? Well, the devil take it. Where's my cat? Oh, how tiresome. Really, you will come from the factory to dinner. No, it'll be too late. Look here, my boy. You've slipped me a glass of vodka. Oh, what is that devilish cat? Ostrovsky, in some play of his, has a man with long hair and short wits. That's me. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to bid you goodbye. If you drop in on me someday, or you would Sonia here, yeah? I'd be very glad. Truly, my place is tiny and all only about 30 acres. But in case you're interested, a model garden and nursery such as you won't find around here in a thousand miles. They have told me you love the woods very much. Of course, one can be of great use, but doesn't it interfere with your real calling? After all, you're a doctor. Well, God alone knows what is our real calling. But is it interesting? Yes, the work is interesting. Very. But you're still a young man. 36, 37. Huh? And it can't be so interesting as you say, with all these, the trees, the trees, and the trees. I think it's monotonous. No, it's extremely interesting. Every year, Mikhailovich plants a new wood plot. He says that forests adorn the earth. They teach a man to understand the beautiful and inspire him to lofty moods. Forests soften a severe climate. In countries where the climate is mild, one spends less effort in a struggle with nature. 
And so man there is more gentle and more tender. People are beautiful there. Their sciences and arts blossom. Their philosophy is not gloomy. Their relation to a woman is full of exquisite nobility. Bravo, bravo. All this is charming, but not convincing. And so you'll allow me, my friend, to go on heating stoves with wood and building barns out of wood. You can heat your stoves with peat moss and build barns out of stones. Well, I'll grant you might cut trees from some necessity, but why destroy the woods? Russian forests are crumbling under the axe. Trees die by the millions. Dwellings of birds and beasts are emptied. Rivers go shallow and dry. Wonderful landscapes vanish, never to be brought back. All because lazy man hasn't sense enough to stoop down and pick up his fuel from the ground. Man is endowed with brains and creative power so he may multiply what's been given to him. But up to now, he's not created, he's destroyed. Yeah, there you go with that mocking look in your eye. Yeah, everything I say seems not to be taken very seriously. And perhaps it is indeed just an oddity of my... But when I pass by the peasant wood plots that I save from being chopped down, and when I hear the rustling sound of my young trees, the stand I planted with my own hands, then I know that the air we breathe is within my power a little. And a thousand years from now, if man should be happy, a little bit of me will be there too. When I plant a birch, later on see it burst into green, wave in the wind, my heart is filled with pride. Mr. Doctor. However, time to go. Very likely, after all, it's just that I'm on. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to bid you goodbye. When will you come to see us again? I don't know. Not for another whole month? And you, Ivan Petrovich, you behaved yourself impossibly again today. Did you have to annoy your mother talking about perpetua mobile? And this afternoon at lunch, you argued with Alexander again. Oh, how small of you that is. <laughs> but I detest him. There is nothing to detest Alexander for. He is the same as all of you, and not any worse than you. If only you could see your face, the way you move around, how, how lazy your life is. Oh. How lazy. Both lazy and bored. Everybody blames my husband. Everybody looks at me with pity. Wretched woman, she married an old man. Why can't you look at a woman with indifference if she doesn't belong to you? The doctor was right. In all of you sits the demon of destruction. I don't like this philosophy. This doctor has a tired, nervous face. While I've been here, he's been here three times. I'm shy. I haven't talked to him once. I haven't even been nice to him. He thinks I have a grudge against him. Quite possibly the reason you and I are such friends, Ivan, is because we are both such tiresome, boring people. Tiresome. Don't look at me that way. I don't like it. How can I look at you differently since I love you? Oh. You're my joy, my youth, my life. Oh, I know that my chances of being loved in return are nil, but I don't want anything. Just let me look at you, listen to your voice. Shh, they might hear you. Don't drive me away. Let me talk about my love. That alone will be the greatest happiness for me. Ivan, this is painful. Sonia, you? Sorry. Ah, you, Lenotchka. Ah, listen. 
unbearable pain. Here. Your rope's fallen on the floor. I shall close the window, Alexander. No, 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 no. No. It's stuffy here. I just dozed off and dreamed that my left leg didn't belong to me. An excruciating pain woke me up. Oh, this is not doubt. Rheumatism, more likely. What time is it? Twenty minutes past midnight. This disgusting old age. Devil take it. When I grew old, I began to be revolting to myself. Now, apparently, all of you find it revolting to look at now. me. Speak of your old age as if we were the ones guilty of your being old. You are the first to be revolted. <laughs> of course, you're right. I'm not stupid. I understand. You're young, healthy, beautiful. You want to live. But I am old. Almost a corpse. So, of course, it's silly for me to be still alive. It won't be long now that I shall have to drag myself around. No, I can't bear it. For God's sake, be quiet. I am torturing everyone, of course. Now, this is unbearable. Tell me, what is it you want from me? Nothing. Well, then be quiet, I beg you. Even my voice becomes revolting. Well, suppose I am revolting. I am an egoist. I am a despot. Haven't I the right? even in my old age, to some sort of egoism, as if I haven't learned it, as if I'm asking you. I'm not entitled to a quiet old age, to some attention from people. Nobody is disputing your rights. It will rain soon. Nobody is disputing your rights. To work all your life for silence. To get used to your desk, your auditorium, Papa. your esteemed colleagues. You yourself gave orders to fetch Dr. Astroff. When he arrived, you refused to receive him. That is not very nice. We have just bothered a man for nothing. What do I need with your Astroff? He knows as much about medicine as I know of astronomy. Well, we can't, with your gout, summon the entire medical faculty. Well, I wouldn't even speak to that imbecile. As you like it. It's all the same to me. <sighs> what time is it now? Past midnight. Chokey. Shoulder. Bring me the rocks. even ask. One can't ask for anything. I beg you, don't. That might please some people, but not me. Kindly leave me out of it. I don't like it. Besides, I have no time to waste. I have to get up early tomorrow. I have hay to cut. A storm is gathering outside. Hey. Yelena, Sonia, go to sleep. I've come to take your place. Don't leave me alone with him. He'll talk my head off. But we must give them some rest. This is the second night. They haven't had any sleep. Very well, then. Let them sleep. But you go, too. Now, I implore you, for the sake of our former friendship. Ah! Our former friendship. Former! Be quiet. Former! Yeah. Well, don't leave me alone with him. He'll talk my head off. Now, <laughs> really, this is just getting to be laughable. You ought to lie down, nurse. It's already late. The thermobar hasn't been cleared from the table yet. How can I very well lie down? Everybody can't sleep. Everybody is being bored. I alone, I am leading a happy life. Oh, what is it, dear sir? Does it hurt? Oh, my legs throb too. How they throb. This is your old affliction. They're a patrolna. 
Sonia's dear mother used to spend sleepless nights killing herself, pitying you. Come, dear sir, let me put you to bed. I'll give you some linden tea to drink that will warm up your feet, and I'll pray to God. Yes, Maria. Let us go. Yes, come, dear sir. Oh, how my legs throb. Yes, your Vera Patrona was always weeping, always pitying you. You were small and foolish in those days, Sonia. Come, dear sir. He has exhausted me. I can hardly stand up. You are exhausted by him. I am exhausted by myself. This is the third night I haven't slept. Things are not going very well in this house, Ivan. You're a cultured, intelligent man. Well, let's leave philosophy out to it. You realize the world is going to ruin, not from fires or disasters, but from hate, enmity, from all this petty squabbling. Your business should not be to grumble, but to make peace amongst us all. First of all, you make me make peace with myself, my darling. Oh, now stop it. Go away! The rain will be over now. And everything in nature will be fresh and breathing. Only I will not be refreshed by the storm. Day and night, like a fiend at my throat, is the thought that my life is hopelessly lost. The past it was foolishly spent on trifles, and the present, with all its absurdity, is frightful. Here they are, my life and my love. What shall I do with them? Where shall I put them? My passion is dying in vain like a ray of sunlight in a pit. And I myself am dying. Ivan, when you talk to me of your love, I get numb somehow. I don't know what to say. Forgive me. There's really nothing I can say. Good night. If only you knew how I suffer. And the thought that next to me in the same house another life is dying yours. Your life. What are you waiting for? What cursed philosophy holds you back? Understand. I do understand. Ivan Petrovich, are you drunk? It may be. It may be. Where is the doctor? Spending the night in my office. It may be anything, maybe. And today you were drinking. Now, why is that? Because it is like living, somehow. Like living. <laughs> Len, don't take that away from me. Ivan, you never used to talk so much, and you never used to drink. Now, go to bed. I am bored with you. Oh, my darling, my beautiful... Oh, now, stop it. Don't drink. This is revolting. She's gone. ago I used to meet her at my dear sister's. She was 17 then and I was 37 years old. Why didn't I fall in love with her then and propose to her? Why am I old? Why doesn't she understand? Her speechifying, her idle moralizing, her foolish thoughts about the end of the world, all, all that is hateful to me. Oh, I was deceived. I used to adore that professor. I used to be proud of him and his learning. I lived it, breathed it. All that he wrote and uttered seemed to me genius. God, and now here he is, retired. And you can see the whole sum of his life. After he's gone, there won't be a single page of his work left behind. He's absolutely unknown. He's nothing. A soap bubble. I've been fooled! I can see. Stupid fool. Waffles, play! <laughs> well, there are people asleep in the house. Wait. You alone in here? No femininity around? <laughs> farewell, farewell, my tiny hut, my darling. I go dead, no place for the... Ah, ah, ah. I was awakened by the storm. A real drenching rain it was. See, what time is it now? Ah, oh, the devil only knows. Thought I heard the voice of Yelena Andreevna. She was just here. Superb woman. 
medicines. It's every variety of prescription. From Moscow, Kharkov, Tula. It's all the towns in Russia. I've had enough of his gout. Tell, tell me, is he really ill or is he just pretending? He's ill. He's ill. Why are you so sad tonight? You're feeling sorry for the professor, perhaps? Leave me alone. Or in love with the professor's wife, perhaps? She's my friend. Already? What does that mean? A woman can become a man's friend only in some such sequences. As first, an amiable companion, then a mistress. Not only after that, a friend. That's a vulgar philosophy. Uh, <laughs> that's what you call it, huh? Yes, I must admit, I've become a vulgarian. You can see, too, I'm drunk. Usually, I drink like this only once a month. Such times, I become very brazen and rude. Nothing stops me. I dream the most beautiful operations, and I perform them perfectly. I paint the most far-reaching plans for the future. Such times, I don't feel like a fool of myself. <laughs> And I believe I'm bringing an enormous boon to mankind. Enormous. Such times I have my own private system of philosophy. And all of you, my little brothers, seem like such very small insects. <laughs> <laughs> Microbes. <laughs> Waffles. Play. No, my good friend, with all my soul, I should be glad too. But there are people asleep in the house. Play. Play. <laughs> I need a drink. Excuse me, I'm without a necktie. You won't go on you. You got drunk with the doctor again. Struck up a friendship. Oh, you bright hawks. That one is always like this, but why you? Your age is unbecoming. <laughs> age has nothing to do with it. When one has no life of one's own, one lives in illusions. After all, that's better than nothing. All our hay is mowed. It rains every day. Everything is rotting. You occupy yourself with illusions. You have neglected the farming completely. I am the only one that works. I have no strength left. Uncle, I have tears in your eyes. What tears? Nonsense. Just now you looked at me as your mother used to, my dear. Oh, poor sister. Where is she now? Is she only you? What, Uncle? You what? It is very hard. I'm not well. Oh. Oh. Never mind, never mind. It's nothing. Are you asleep? Just one minute. Right away. At your command. You go ahead and drink if it's not revolting to you, but I implore you, don't let Uncle drink anymore. It's bad for him. Oh, very well. We won't drink anymore. I'll go home at once. She was off the sign. As soon as they hitch up my team, it'll be dawn. It's raining. Wait oh, till morning. The storm is passing just a fringe of it. I'm going. But please, don't ask me over anymore to see your father. I say gout, he says rheumatism. I tell him to lie down, he sits up. And today he wouldn't even talk to me. He is spoiled. Would you like a bite of something? Well, I think I will. 
I love a bite at night. Ah, there seems to be something on the sideboard. In his time, they say he had great success with women. The ladies spoiled him. Here, take some cheese. No, I haven't eaten anything today. I only drank. Your father has a very difficult character. Uh, may I? You know, no one is around here. We can talk straight out. It seems to me I couldn't live a month in this house. I choke in this area. Uh, your father, who's all bound up in his gout, your Uncle Vanya with his hypochondria, your grandmother, and to top it all, your stepmother. What about my stepmother? Well, a human being, everything ought to be beautiful. Face and dress and soul and thoughts. Oh, she was beautiful. No arguing that. But she only sleeps and eats, walks, bewitches us all with the beauty, nothing more. She has no chores whatsoever. Isn't that true? Others work for her. And an idle life can't be right. Well, maybe I'm being a little too hard. I'm not content with life, just as your Uncle Vanya is not. We both uh, become nothing but grumblers. And you are not content with your life. I know whole I like life. But this rural Russian average man life, I can't bear it. With all the strength in my soul, I have a contempt for it. As far as my own personal life goes, so help me God, absolutely nothing good in it. You know how it is when you're in the woods on a dark night. You see far off a little light burning. You don't mind the darkness of being tired, the branches that scratch you in the face. I work, as you well know, as no one else does in this district. Sometimes what I go through is unbearable. But for me, there's no little light in the distance. For myself, I'm not expecting anything anymore. I don't like people. It's a long time since I loved anyone. No one? No one. Oh, for your old nurse, I feel a kind of tenderness for old times. But the peasants are all alike, over and over, like beasts living in dirt. And it is hard to get out with the intelligence. They bore you. They all. All our good friends will have shallow thoughts, shallow feelings. They will not see further than their noses. The simple fact is they are stupid. And those that are clever, more worthwhile, are hysterical. They're eaten up with self-analysis. They whine. They despise everything. They slander people cruelly. They approach a man sideways, look at him out of the corner of an eye, and they judge, oh, that's a psychopath. And when they don't know which label to put on my forehead, they say, oh, he's an odd one. Odd. You know, I love the woods, that's odd. They don't eat meat, that's odd, too. There is no longer any spontaneous, pure, free kinship with nature, nor with mankind. No, and no. No, no, don't drink anymore. I entreat you, I implore you. It's so unbecoming to you. You are refined. You have such a gentle voice. More than that, you are like nobody among the people that I know. Like nobody else. You are beautiful. Then why do you want to look like ordinary people who drink and play cards? Don't do that. I entreat you. You always say people don't create. They merely destroy that that is given to them from above. Then why? Why are you destroying yourself? Don't. Don't. I entreat you. I implore you. Well, I won't drink anymore. Give me your word. Word of honor. Thank you. Yeah, no. I say I'm sober. Well, I'm already completely sobered up, and I'll stay this way. <coughs> to the end of my days. Now I, I should go on. 
I say my time has run out. I'm too late for me. I'm aged, overworked, I've become vulgar. All my feelings have gotten blunted. And I never seem able to be attached to anyone. I don't love anybody. And I'm already past loving anybody. See, what still enthralls me is beauty. I'm not blunted to that. Seems to me if only Yelena Andreevna wanted to, in one day, she could set my head in the whirl. But that's not loving. That is not belong. What is the matter with you? Well, during Lent, a patient of mine died under chloroform. Time to forget about that. Tell me, Mikhailovich, if I had a friend or a younger sister and you learned that she, well, let us say, loved you, just what way would you take it? What way? I don't know. Perhaps no way. I would make her understand that I cannot fall in love with her. Besides, I have other things on my mind. Well, it'll be that as it may, it's time I left. Good night, my dear. See, otherwise we won't stop till dawn. Now, I'll go out through the garden, if you'll permit me. I'm afraid your uncle might detain me. <laughs> didn't say anything to me. Your soul and heart are still hidden from me. Why do I feel so happy? Mm -hmm. I said to him, you are refined. Mm -hmm. You have such a gentle voice. Was it the wrong moment for that? Mm -hmm. His voice trembles, mm -hmm. caresses me. I feel him in the air. When I told him about a younger sister, he did not understand. Oh, how terrible it is. That I'm not pretty. How terrible. I'm not pretty, I know, I know. Last Sunday, as we were leaving church, I heard them talking about me, and one woman said, she's kind, generous. But it's a pity she's not pretty. Not pretty. The storm is past. What fine air. Where's the doctor? Gone. Sophia. What? How much longer are you going to be cross with me? We haven't done each other any wrong. Why then should we be enemies? Enough is enough. I myself wanted to... <laughs> oh, yes. Enough about being angry. Ah, uh, excellent. Papa's lying down. No, he's sitting up in the bedroom. We don't talk to each other for weeks, you and I. God only knows why. Who left the sideboard open? Mikhail Vovich had supper. And there's some wine there. Let us drink Grudusha. Let's. Out of one glass, that's better. You first. Oh, 
Oh. I myself wanted to make peace. But somehow I felt embarrassed. Well, now, why are you crying? It's nothing. No special reason. Well, now, enough, enough, enough. You silly girl. I'm crying, too. You resent me because it looks as if I married your father calculatingly. And if you believe in oaths, I swear to you I married him for love. I was infatuated with him as a learned and famous man. My love wasn't real. It was artificial. But it seemed real to me then. So I'm not guilty. And you, from the very day of the wedding, have never stopped accusing me with your intelligent, suspecting eyes. Well, peace. Peace. Let us forget. Don't look at it like that. It isn't coming. You must have faith in everybody, otherwise life is impossible. Tell me, in all honesty, as a friend, are you happy? No. I knew it. Here is one more question. Tell me frankly, would you have liked to have a young husband? <laughs> oh, what a child you still are. Well, of course I should have. <laughs> oh. Now ask me something else. Go on, ask me. Do you like the doctor? Yes, very much. I have a silly face, haven't I? Here. He is gone. And I keep hearing his voice and his steps. And when I look at a dark window, I see his face there. Let me say what I mean. I can't talk so loud, I'm ashamed. Let's go to my room. There we will talk. Do I seem silly to you? No. Oh, well, tell me something about him. But what? Well, he's clever. He can do anything. He's able to do anything. He heals the sick and he plants woods, too. Oh, yes, but it isn't a matter of woods and medicine. Think. Think yourself what a life that doctor has. Impassable mud on the roads, frost, blinding snow, enormous distances, people, crude and wild, poverty, diseases. Well, in such a setting, it's difficult for anyone to stay good and sober at 40. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you... Uh, you deserve happiness. And I, my face, is only a tedious episode in the crowd. In music, in my husband's house. Everywhere, in fact, I was merely a passing face. You know, Sonia, the truth is, when you come to look at it, I'm really very, very unhappy. <laughs> no, there is no happiness for me in this world, <laughs> none. Well, why do you laugh? Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I feel like playing. I shall play something for you right now. Oh, do play. Oh, I couldn't possibly sleep. Do play. Right. Oh, I forgot your father's not well. When he's ill, music irritates him. You go ask. And if he is quite well, then I shall play. Go on. Right away. It's been a long time since I've played. Is that you tapping your theme? It's me. Well, don't tap. Your master isn't well. I'll go right away. <laughs> hey, Vaska, ready? What do you do that game? I shall play and cry, cry like a fool. No, you cannot.
Herr Professor deigned to express the wish that we all gather in this living room at one o'clock. Or at one. He wished to disclose something to the world. Now, perhaps it is some kind of business. He hasn't got any business. He writes nonsense, grumbles, and is jealous, nothing else. Uncle. I'm sorry. Oh. Do admire. She walks around and sways a little from indolence. Sweet, very sweet. Buzz, buzz, always buzzing. Aren't you ever tired of it? I'm bored. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> Isn't there enough to do? If you wanted to, for example, occupy yourself with running the house, teaching the children, caring for the sick. Is that so little? When you and Papa were not here, Uncle Vanya and I went to the market ourselves to sell the flour. But I don't know how, and besides, it isn't interesting. It is only in sociological novels they go teaching and curing the sick peasants. Why are you wilting away? Ah, oh, my darling, my magnificent one, be a good girl. In your veins flows the blood of a water nymph, so be a water nymph. Let yourself go, if only for once in your life. Hurry and fall in love with some river god. Plunge into the whirlpool head first, so that her professor and all of us just hold up our hands. We are so astonished. Oh, now leave me alone. This is cruel. Oh. Now, my joy, forgive me. I apologize. Peace. Well, an angel wouldn't have the patience. You must agree. As a token of peace and harmony, I will bring you a bouquet of roses. I made it for you this morning. Autumn roses. Charming, sad roses. Autumn roses. Charming, sad roses. And September's already with us. How shall we live through the winter here? Where is the doctor? In Uncle Vanya's office, writing something. I'm glad Uncle Vanya went out. I must talk to you. About what? About what? Oh, well, now enough. Enough? Oh, I am not pretty. Well, you have beautiful hair. No. When a woman is not pretty, they tell her, you have beautiful hair, beautiful eyes. I have loved him now for six years. Loved him more than my own mother. And here, you see, I keep coming to you to talk about him. He is here every day now. But he doesn't notice me. It's such agony. I haven't any hope. No, no. Oh, God, grant me strength. I prayed all night. I have no more pride. I have no power to control myself. All the servants know I love him. Everyone knows. And he? No, he never notices me. Strange man he is. Do you know what? Let me. I'll talk to him, carefully by hinting. Well, really? How long can you be in this uncertain state? Oh, do let me. Excellent. He loves you or he doesn't. That won't be difficult to find out. I shall question him carefully. He won't even know. All we want to find out is yes or no. If no, then let him stop coming here. Don't you agree? Easier when you don't see him. Well, now we won't put it off. He promised to show me some sketches. You go tell him I want to see him. You will tell me the whole truth. Well, yes, of course. It seems to me the truth, whatever it is, is much better than this uncertainty. Trust me, my little dove. Yes, yes. I will tell him you want to see his sketches. No, uncertainty is better. After all, there's hope. What is it?
It's nothing worse. He's not in love with her. That's obvious. To give in to the charm of such a man. Why not? Perhaps it must be so. But I'm shy. Cowardly. I shall be tortured by my conscience. Oh, I'm ready to fall on my knees before Sonia. And we... Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You wanted to see... Yes, yesterday you promised to show me your work. Are you free? Yes, of course. Where were you born? In St. Petersburg. Got your education? At the conservatory there. Well, this may not interest you. Well, why? Oh, well, it's true. I don't know about the country, but I do read a great deal. Here in the house, I have my own table in Yvonne's room. When I'm utterly tired out, completely in the dumps, I drop everything, run to this house, and amuse myself with this thing here an hour or so. Yvonne and Sonia do the accounts. I sit near them at my own table, dabbling. And I feel warm, at peace, and the cricket chirps. But this pleasure I don't allow myself very often. Not often, once a month. This is a map of our countryside as it was 50 years ago. The dark green, the light green are forest. Half the whole area is forest. The red cross line on the green show where elk and deer used to be. The flora are green, the fauna are red. Now, besides the villages and small towns, various settlements were scattered. Farms, monasteries, water mills. There were a great many cattle and horses. That shows in blue. For instance, in this area, the blue was thick. All the herds were there. And every farm had three horses. Now, that's what there was 25 years ago. Only a third of the whole area is woodland. There are no longer any deer, but there are elk. The green in the forest, the blue of the livestock, are already paler, and so forth and so on. Now, the third map, our countryside today. Well, the green shows here and there, but not solid, only in spots. The elk are gone. The migratory birds, the grouse, of well, the farm settlements, monasteries, mills is not even a trace. On the whole, a picture of a slow plane going downhill, which we can see needs only some 10 or 15 years more to be finished. Now, you may say there's some cultural influence at work here. Yes, that's granted. If in place of these hacked down forests, roads were run, railroads laid out, if there were, Workshops, factories, schools, people would become healthier, better off, more intelligent. There's nothing of the kind. Everywhere the same. Swamps and flies, no roads. Oh, I can see by your face. This is not interesting to you. But I understand so little of that. Oh, there's nothing to understand. It's simply not interesting. Well, to be frank, my mind wasn't on it. Forgive me. I must do a little cross-questioning. <laughs> and I'm embarrassed. I don't know where to begin. Cross-questioning? Well, a cross-examination. Oh, innocent. Let us sit down. The matter concerns a young person. We shall talk like... Honest people as friends, without beating about the bush. Agreed? Yes. The matter concerns my stepdaughter, Sonia. Do you like her? Yes, I respect her. Do you like her as a woman? No. Well, now, one or two more things. That's the end of it. Have you noticed nothing? No, nothing. You don't love her. I see it in your eyes. Now, she is suffering. You must understand this and go away from here. Well, my season is already passed. Besides, I have no time. When could I find it? What a disagreeable conversation. I am as upset as if I were dragging 20 tons. Well, thank God it's over. Let us forget as if we hadn't talked at all, and you ride away. You're an intelligent man. You will understand. I'm blushing red all over. 
If you told me a month or two ago, I would possibly have considered. But no. And if she's suffering, then, of course, there's just one thing I don't understand. Why did you have to have this cross ex Are you being sly? What does this mean? Sly? Let's assume that Sonia is suffering. I readily admit it. But why this cross-examination of yours? Permit me. Don't make such an astonished face. You know very well why I come here every day. Why and for whose sake I come. This you know very well. Oh, you darling owl, don't look at me like that. I'm a wise old sparrow. Owl? What does this mean? Oh, you beautiful, fluffy little thing. You must have victims. Here it is a whole month already. I'm doing nothing. I've dropped everything. I look greedily for you. And this you like, usually. Well, then I'm conquered. You knew it, even without the questioning. I give up. Here, eat me. Have you lost your mind? Oh, you are sly. I am a better woman than you think I am. I swear to you. I'll leave today. I won't be here anymore. Where are we going to see each other tomorrow? Tell me quickly. Someone might come and tell me. Oh, you are wonderful. Luscious. One kiss. No. It could be just a kiss your fragrance. No, I swear to Don't you. Don't swear. I... You mustn't swear. Why use needless words? Oh, you're beautiful. What hands. But that's enough. After all, you forget yourself. Tell me where we're to see each other tomorrow. You see, it can't be escaped. We've got to see each other. No, leave me alone. Have mercy. No. You'll come to the forest about two tomorrow. Yes, you'll come. Tell me, you'll come. Let me go. This is terrible. So, <laughs> yes. Oh. Much esteemed, Ivan Petro. Today the weather is not bad. This morning it was cloudy. It was good rain. But now the sun is shining. Honestly speaking, autumn turned out beautiful. And the winter crop, not bad. Except for one thing. The days are getting short. You will try. You will use all your influence so that my husband and I can go away from here today even. Do you hear me, Ivan? This very day. Hmm? Very well. Of course. Then I saw everything. Everything. Do you hear me, Ivan? I must leave here this I very myself. day. And not well, Your Excellency. For two days now, I have been ailing my head somehow. Yes, but uh, where is everybody? You know, I don't like this house. It's a sort of labyrinth. Twenty-six enormous rooms, everybody scatters. You never can find anybody. Would you ask Maria Vasilyevna? I Elena am here, Andrea? Alexander. Oh, you are? Well, now, <laughs> oh. sit down, ladies and gentlemen, I beg of you. What did he say? Peace within us, no matter what. Later. What, what I cannot digest is this regimen of country life. I understand. Which he said he would not come here anymore, yes. Fallen off the earth onto some foreign planet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sit down, ladies and gentlemen, please. Sonia. Sonia. No, she doesn't hear. Nurse, sit down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hang your ears, so to speak, upon the peg of attention. Maybe I'm not needed. May I go? No, 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 no. You are needed more than anybody. What do you want from me? Now, why are you angry? Have I done anything to annoy you? Drop that tone. Let us proceed with business. What do you need? Here is Mama. Now I can begin. Ladies and gentlemen, I have invited you all here in order to inform you 
that the Inspector General is on his way. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yes, joking apart, this is a serious matter. I have gathered you here because I need your help and advice. And knowing your unfailing courtesy, I hope that I shall get it. I am uh, a learned man, a bookworm, and have always been a stranger to the practical life. But I cannot do without the help of well-informed persons. And so I beg of you, Ivan Petrovich, and you, Ilya Ilyich, and you, Mama. The fact is, Manet Omnis Una Nox. That is, we all walk under God. I am old and sick, and therefore it is timely that I should regulate my property insofar as it concerns my family. My life is finished, but I have a young wife and a maiden daughter. <gasps> now, uh, to go on living in the country is for me impossible. We are not made for country life. On the other hand, to live in town, and the income we derive from this estate is equally impossible. We must devise some means of obtaining a permanent income. And I have thought of one such device, which I now have the honor of presenting to you for your consideration. This estate gives us an average of not more than 2%. I propose to sell it. If we convert the proceeds into interest-bearing paper, we will receive between 4 and 5 percent. And I think there will be a surplus of several thousand, which will enable me to buy a little villa Excuse in me, uh, Finland. My ears must be deceiving me. Will you repeat what you just said? Oh, yes. I shall uh, convert the surplus into interest-bearing paper. And... Uh, with the balance by a little villa in Finland. Not Finland. You said something else. Oh, yes. I, I propose to sell the estate. That's it. You propose to sell the estate. Excellent. A fine idea. And what do you propose to do with me, my old mother, and Sonia here? All that we will discuss in good time, not Please. everything at once. Apparently, up to now, I haven't had a drop of common sense. Up to now, I was so stupid as to think that this estate belongs to Sonia. My late father bought this estate as a dowry for my sister. And in my simplicity, I understood that this was not Turkish law, but Russian. And I thought that the estate passed from my sister to Sonia. Yes, the estate belongs to Sonia. Who is arguing that? Without Sonia's consent, I wouldn't decide to sell. But what I propose is for Sonia's benefit. This is incomprehensible. <laughs> incomprehensible. Either I've lost my mind, don't, or I... Don't contradict Alexander. You must believe that he knows better than we do what is good and what is bad. Let me have some water. Say whatever you want to. Whatever you want. I don't understand why you excite yourself. I don't claim that my plan is ideal. If everybody finds it unsuitable, I shall not insist. Your Excellency, I, I nourish toward learning not only feelings of reverence, but kinship as well. My brother, Grigory Ilyich, his wife's brother, perhaps you knew him, Konstantin Trofimovich Lakadomonov, he was a magistrate. Hold on there, Waffles, we are talking about business. Later. Here, ask him. This estate was bought from his uncle. And why should I ask this him? This estate was bought with things as they were at that time for 95,000. Now, father paid down only 70,000, and there was a debt left of 25,000. Yes, will you now, permit listen, me? This estate would not have been bought had I not given up my inheritance in favor of my sister, whom I love deeply. But if that were not enough, for 10 years I worked like an ox and paid off the entire debt. I regret that I started this conversation. This estate is clear of debts and intact only because of my personal efforts. 
And now that I have grown old, they want to throw me out on my neck. I don't understand. What are you driving at? For 25 years, I have managed this estate, worked, sent you money like a most conscientious clerk. During all that time, you not once thanked me. Oh. All that time, both in my youth and now, you paid me 500 rubles a year for wages, fit for a beggar. And you never once thought of increasing it even by one ruble. You could have increased it yourself any time you wanted. Why didn't I steal? Why didn't you all hold me in contempt for not having stolen? It would have been just. And now I would not be a beggar. Oh, yeah. Spanya, don't. I'm trembling. Why spoil good relations? Oh, come, come on. on. For 25 years with this mother here, I sat like a mole inside these four walls. All our thoughts and feelings belong to you alone. In the daytime, we talked of you, your works, felt proud of you, pronounced your name with reverence. And the nights we wasted reading magazines and books which were known to spice on the deck. Don't, Fanya, don't! What is it you want? You were to us a creature of the highest order. And your articles mean you by heart. But now my eyes are open. I see everything. You, you write about art and you understand nothing of art. All your works that I used to love are not worth a brass penny. You, you, you fooled us. Ladies and gentlemen, make him stop or I shall go. Ivan Petrovich, I demand that you stop talking. I will not stop talking. Wait! I haven't finished. You have ruined my life. I have not lived, not lived. Thanks to you, I destroyed, swept away the best years of my life. You are my worst enemy. I can't, I, I can't. I can't. Can. to you very well, and you keep it. I don't want it. This very minute I'm going away from this hell. I life can't bear it any lost. longer. Life is lost. I am talented, intelligent, brave. Had I led a normal life, there might have come out of me a Schopenhauer, an Ostoyevsky. But I'm through keeping accounts and making reports. I'm losing my mind. Mother, I'm in despair. Mother! Be careful, Alexander. Mother, what am I to do? Nurse, nurse. I know myself do. what to do. Remember me! Ladies and gentlemen, keep this madman away from me. Stay in the same house with him. I cannot. He lives there, almost next to me. Well, let him take some cottage in the village, or I will move out of here. But remain under the same roof. I cannot. We will go away from here today. We must make the arrangements at once. Contemptible he is. One must be merciful, Papa. Merciful. Uncle Vanya and I are so miserable. Try to remember when you were younger, Grandmother and Uncle Vanya translated books for you at night. Copied your papers every night. We sent everything to you. We didn't eat our bread free. I'm not saying the right thing. Not the right thing I am saying, Papa. But you have to understand us. One must be merciful. Alexander, talk to him. Have it out with him, I implore you. Very well. I will have it out with him. I am not angry. I am not accusing him of anything. But even you must admit that his conduct is, to say the least, somewhat strange. Since you wish it, I will go to him. But you must be gentler with him. Mm -hmm. Quiet him. Very well. Be kind to him. Yes. 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 Nurse, nurse. Oh, it's all right, my child. It's all right. The geese will honk, then stop, honk, then stop. Nurse, nurse. Why, you're shivering as if it were a frost. There, there, my little orphan. God is merciful. Some linden tea and some raspberry, and you'll forget it. It will pass. Now, don't be sad, my little lord. Hold him! Hold him! He's lost his mind! Hold him! Hold him! Give it to me! Give it to me, I tell you! Give it to me! Give it to me! Give it to me! Give it to me! Where is he? Aha! Here he is. Bang! Oh, nurse. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>
Missed. <laughs> Missed again. Oh, the devil. Devil, take you. Alexander, take me away from here. Do anything. Kill me, but I cannot stay here. I cannot. What I am I doing? What am I doing? Hard. He's hard. Hurt. 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 Everything in its proper order, the way people have them, Christian. It's a long time since I, sinner that I am, have eaten noodle soup. You'll be faster, Marina Chimofievna. They'll be calling us right away to say goodbye. Well, they've already ordered the horses brought. Oh, there's not much left. To Kharkov they're going. Where is Sonia? He's in the garden, walking with the doctor, looking for Ivan. They're afraid he might hurt himself. Where's his pistol? I hid it in the cellar. Oh, our sins. Leave me alone. Get away from here. Leave me alone if only for one hour. I can't stand being treated like somebody's ward. I don't need a guardian. Right off, Anya. Onk, you geese, onk. Leave me alone. Well, with great pleasure. I should have left a long time ago, but I repeat, I'm not leaving until you return what you took from me. I didn't take anything from you. Look, I'm talking seriously. Don't hold me up. I should have left a long time ago. I took nothing from you. Oh, yes. Well, very well. We'll wait a while. Then by your leave, we'll have to use force. We'll tie you up and search you. I'm talking seriously. Absolutely. As you wish. To play such a fool. Fire twice and not to hit even once. That I will never forgive myself for. Well, if you feel like shooting, why not aim at your own forehead? Strange. I attempted murder. And they don't arrest me. Don't prosecute me. That means they consider me insane. That's an old story. You're not insane. You're simply odd. A little clown. There was a time when I, too, considered everyone who was odd as sick, insane. But now my opinion is that the normal state of man is to be odd. You're entirely normal. I'm ashamed. If you only knew how ashamed I am. This sharp feeling of shame is not like just pain. It's unbearable. What am I to do? What am I to do? Nothing. Give me something. My God, I'm 47 years old. If Suppose I live till 60. If so, I still have 13 years left. That long. How shall I live through those 13 years? What, what will I do? What will I fill them with? Do you understand? Do you understand? If only I could live through what's left of life somehow differently. To wake up on a clear, quiet morning and to feel that you've begun to live anew. That the past is forgotten. Faded away like smoke. To begin a new life. Teach me how to begin, bro. What to begin? Hey, you. So what new life is there? Our situation, yours and mine, is hopeless. It is? You can be sure of that. Give me something here inside me, Burns. Oh, stop it! Those who will live a hundred, two hundred years after us, and who will despise us for having lived our lives so stupidly, so without any taste, they will perhaps find a way how to be happy. And there's but one hope for you and me, 
hope that when we're sleeping in our coffins, we may be visited by dreams, perhaps even pleasant ones. Yes, my brother. In the whole countryside, there were only two decent cultured men, you and I. But in some ten years, this narrow-minded life, this cramping life, has poisoned us with its rotten stink. It's gotten into our blood. And we've become just as much vulgarians as the rest of them. So stop trying to talk the toothache away. Give me back what you took from me. I didn't take anything from you. You took from my medical bag a jar of morphine. Now listen. If no matter what, you want to commit suicide, go out into the woods and shoot yourself. The, the morphine, give it back to me. There'll be talk, there'll be guessing. They'll think I gave it to you. As for me, it's enough I shall have to cut you open. Hey, you think that would be interesting? Leave me alone. Sonia! Uncle took from my medical bag a jar of morphine and won't get it back. You tell him. But after all, that's not very intelligent of him. Besides, I have no time. It's time I left. Uncle, did you take the morphine? He took it. I'm sure of it. Give it back. Why do you want to frighten us? Give it back, Uncle Vanya. I am just as unhappy as you are. Maybe. But I don't despair. I bear it. And I will bear it till the end of my life. Then you bear it too. Give it back. My nice, dear Uncle Vanya. Darling, give it back. You are kind. You will take pity on us and give it back. You bear it too, Uncle. Bear it! get back to work quickly. Quickly do something or else I cannot. I cannot. Yes, to work. As soon as we see them off. We've let everything go. Now I can start off. Are you here? We're leaving now. Go to Alexander. He wants to tell you something. Go on, Uncle Vanya. Let's go. You and Papa must make peace. You really must. I'm leaving now. Already? They've already brought the horses. Today you promised me you would go away from here. Do I remember? I'm leaving now. Were you frightened? Is it so alarming? Yes. Then maybe you'll stay. Won't you? Tomorrow in the forest. No. I've already decided. That is why I look at you so bravely, because our departure is already decided. I ask you one thing, though. Think better of me. I want you to respect me. Oh. Stay, I beg you. Confess you have nothing to do in this world, no object whatsoever, nothing to occupy your attention. Sooner or later, you'll give in to your feelings. You can't escape it. So isn't it better not in Kharkov, not somewhere in Kursk, but here? in nature's bosom. It's very beautiful here. It's poetic, even. There in the 
forest we have houses half in ruins, quite in Turgenev's taste. How funny you are. I'm still angry with you. Yet, I shall be thinking of you with pleasure. You're an interesting original man. We shall never see each other again, so why hide it? I was a little carried away with you myself. So, let us shake each other's hands and part as friends. Don't think evil of me. Yes, go away from here. To all appearances, you're a good, sincere person. But it also seems there's something strange in your whole nature. You came here with your husband. Everyone who worked here, bustling about, building something, had to drop work. For the entire summer, they occupied themselves with your husband's gout and with you. Both of you, you and he, infected us with your idleness. I was sidetracked. For a whole month now, I've done nothing. All that time, people were ailing. The peasants were grazing their cattle in my nursery. So that it seems no matter where you went, you and he, you brought destruction everywhere. Now, I'm joking, of course. But it's strange how I'm convinced that if you stayed on, there would be an enormous devastation. And I would perish. And you, too, would not survive. So go away from here. Finita la commedia. I'm taking this to remember you by. You know, it's strange. Do we know each other? Suddenly, for some reason, we'll never see each other again. That's the way it goes in this world. But why we're alone, before Uncle Vanya comes in with a bouquet, may I kiss you for goodbye? Wish you the best of everything. No matter what, just once in a lifetime. I must go now. Just go away quickly. If the horses are ready, start right off. Seem to be coming. After what happened, I have lived through so much and thought so much that it seems to me as if I could write an entire treatise for the edification of posterity on how one should live. I accept your apology and I ask you to forgive me. Goodbye. You will receive what you used to receive accurately and everything will be as always. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Don't forget us. Mama. Alexander, have another picture taken and send it to me. You know how dear you are to me. Sonia. Papa. Goodbye. Thank you for the pleasant company. I respect your trend of thought, your impulses, your fascinations, but allow an old gentleman to add to his valedictory just one word. One must, ladies and gentlemen, work. One must work. The best of everything to all of you. Goodbye. Forgive me. We'll never meet again. Goodbye.
At your service, my friend. Why aren't you going to see them off? Let them go, I, I can't. First of all, Uncle Vanya, in our hands, they've been terribly neglected. They sent again today for another bill. Right. You write one bill and I'll write another. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> it is quiet. Pens are scratching. Crickets are chirping. Warm and cozy. I don't feel like leaving here. Well, they're bringing my team. That means all there is left is for me to say goodbye. My dear friends. Say goodbye to my table. And be off. Why are you fidgeting? You could sit down. No, I can't. Mikhovovich, the horses are ready. Yes, I heard it. Here, you take these. Hey, you be careful not to crush the portfolio. I'll see to it. Come to see us again. Not before summer, likely. I doubt during the winter. Of course, if anything happens, you let me know. I'll come. Okay. Thanks for bread, for salt, for kindness. Somehow I don't feel like it is. Maybe you'll drink a little vodka. Well, maybe. is lame for some reason. I found it out yesterday when Peter watered him. Let's get a new shoe. Yeah, and so I'll have to stop by the blacksmith shop in order just for my little dodging. Be boiling hot in this very Africa. Something hellish. Yes, very likely. Drink, please. Your health, son. Nada, 
bit of bread? No, just that. Well, the best of everything. I don't see the orphans. No. We shall live through a long, long line of days, endless evenings. We shall bear patiently the trial of the senses. Well, for others, now and in our old age, without ever knowing any rest, when our hour comes, we die humbly. And there, beside the coffin, we'll say that we suffered, we cried, we felt bitter. And God will take pity on us. You and I, Uncle. Darling Uncle, we shall see life bright, beautiful, fine. We shall be happy and we shall look back with a tender smile on these misfortunes we have now and we shall rest. I have faith, I believe warmly, passionately, we shall rest. We shall rest, we shall hear the angels, we shall see the whole sky all diamonds, we shall see how all our earthly evils, all our sufferings will drown in a mercy that will fill the whole world. And our life will grow tranquil, tender, Sweet as a caress, I believe. I do believe. Oh, my poor dear Uncle Vanya, you are crying. In your life, you have not known what joy was. But wait, Uncle Vanya, wait. We shall rest. We shall rest. 